made it all the way into 2008, where he killed the defense of his Supercross crown. Washougal is the next hurdle for Stewart on his way to a perfect season and his first AMA Motocross Championship. Toyota Motocross Championship presented by FMF, Round 9, the Motosport.com National at Washougal Motocross Park in Washougal, Washington. Beautiful setting for one of the fan favorites on the tour. Hi, everybody. Ralph Shaheen alongside multi-time national champ Jeff Emig. Aaron Bates with us as well. And the fans here in Washougal pumped up to watch number seven. Well, James Stewart really has been incredible this year. Perfect season so far. Really trying to uh, want to get through Unadilla, get through Washington here. We'll take a look back at last season. And where Jeff, it was all about that knee injury here, right here that took him out. Put his foot down, dislocated the knee. You can see how much pain was on the face of James Stewart. Ended his bid for a motocross championship which is the title that has the move in. and it also kept him from defending his supercross championship as well but he's well on his way to the motocross title this year he leads his teammate tim ferry by an incredibly healthy margin and mathematically he could actually wrap it up here this weekend let's check in with aaron bates for progressive pre-race report well, it might be round nine, but this is when all the pressure is on the number 702 of Jimmy Albertson and the 801 of Jeff Alessi. Both of these riders, both riding performance back Hondas, but what they're looking for is that full factory Red Bull Honda ride. Jeff Alessi and Jimmy Albertson both flew out to California this week to test at the Honda training facility, both trying to give their input, their dedication, and show off their talent. Results aren't what they're looking for right now. They're just wanting to see how determined and how much motivation they have behind them. They're trying to alleviate a little bit of pressure on Andrew Short being the only healthy rider under the tent right now, but you can expect both Jeff Alessi and Jimmy Albertson to give it their all for these last three rounds. Honda needs all the help they can get right now. Yeah, they have suffered through some serious injuries. We take a look at Summers, Nick Way here. Honda race format shows we'll have 40 riders in the game. Two motos here today, 30 minutes plus two laps each. Top 20 riders scoring the points. And it's that combination of how you do in those two photos that decides your overall finish. Our Suzuki starting grid shows you how they ran in practice qualifying. And no surprise that James Stewart was up top. But Josh Hill ran pretty good, too, on the Yamaha. Yeah, Josh Hill, Oregon native. He's turned plenty of laps here at this track. Could this be where he breaks out, gets on the podium? Tim Ferry, who's been sick and needs to score at least 20 points, keep the championship hunt alive here this week was 14. All right, here we go. Moto number one in the gate, ready to go from Washougal. <laughs> Looks like Stewart beat everybody to the curb, but he's not gonna get the whole shot. That's gonna go to Cody Cooper. Para Suzuki riders, Cody Cooper, Michael Byrne, drag racing for that all important hole shot, James Stewart once again on the inside and into the lead. Look at that. Just like that. Wow, that is just incredible. He, I, every week we watch James Stewart and he is so aggressive off the start. And throughout his whole career, he's not afraid to really take some risk. In the first couple of turns, it just, he's gone already. It makes such a huge difference. While a lot of Whoa. other guys. Oh, short getting tied up in there with Burner, I believe. I believe that was with Michael Burner that he got tied up with. Just muscled him out of the way, actually. There just got the inside and had trouble making the rut and just pushed them both wide. That actually allowed another rider to slip past Michael Byrne. Cody Cooper in the 902 up into second. Rider out of Tallahassee, Florida. And if you notice, on Cody Cooper's bike here on the handlebars, he's got those yellow plastic hand guards. That's because the roost here at Washougal, it hurts. I'm telling you, I don't know what it is about the soil here. We go to a lot of different tracks where it's rocky and hard dirt, but here at, at Washougal, when you're drag racing up that uphill or trying to follow another rider, 
you just end up here totally bruised on your arms and chest. Wow, Short showing a lot of speed here in the early stages of moto number one. He blows past Cody Cooper, and we were saying now Honda needed some luck. Well, Short's giving him the boost of morale here today. Well, Andrew Short has been on fire this summer, putting in some outstanding rides on the Red Bull Honda. Worked his way into second position here. Cooper, rider from New Zealand. Contract time, he's been really good. Shirt, factory teams are looking at him for a spot. Oh, Boy, Andrew that, Short. That could have been costly, could And that would have been a bad spot here. Let's take a look at the whole shot replay. You see it's up around the left-hand curve. Cooper has it, and then what's What's tricky there is that the guy on the inside, he goes to the outside, banks off the wall. So if a rider comes out of the left there, comes straight, uh-oh, Ryan Clark is off, off the track in the mechanics area. I'm not sure what the problem is for the rider on the 39. And Jeff, you know, we saw that shot going in that first corner. Here's Jeff Malassi running up in seventh, just in front of Josh Hill on the factory Yamaha. Stewart, boy, he carried all that speed into that first corner, but he just blew the corner, went way wide, and everybody tucked up underneath him. But he has that ability just to, just to dive down the inside and make it happen. Here we're taking a look at Josh Hill, factory Yamaha rider. See him shaking his head there, ducking his, his uh, helmet, trying to get the visor in front of his goggles. You really take a lot of, see right there, once again, you take a lot of roost to your nose, Riders will use an extra uh, nose guard that actually attaches to the goggles. Also, you'll take quite a, quite a bit of roost to the front of your neck. And so if you dump your helmet, get the mouth guard and the visor down there, uh, protects that. Breathing is already a tricky part of this sport. That just makes it even harder, doesn't it? It definitely is. That's into the tree section here. See where it gets kind of one line through here. You can't get out of out of the roost. This is where you really take a lot. Then once you head through the right-hander here and into the whoop section, you see the riders kind of getting off to the left or right. Josh Hill making another pass. It's by blows. Trying to pick his way up through the field here. Josh Hill, the winner of Minneapolis Supercross. Trying to break the wing at the top five. We'll be right back to watch you. Speed racing demands even faster news. That's what you get on the motorcycle racing section of speedtv.com. You'll get the most up-to-date news, results, and in-depth commentary on the web. Go now to speedtv.com, your online motorsports authority. Boy, it's hard to find more picturesque settings for motocross than here in Washu. It's so beautiful up here. Just such a great place to visit and to come race. And what's just so scenic about this track is you see the contrast between the beautiful trees and, and all that, and then all the sponsor banners, all the colorful bikes of riders here. Look at Michael Byrne making a move on Cody, Cody Cooper. Cooper. Got him. Had to work the brakes hard. Oh, Cooper bouncing back. Gets his 902 back in front of his stable mate at Suzuki, Michael Byrne. Michael Byrne really riding with a lot of confidence lately. Had that time off with the knee injury, total knee reconstruction, just like James Stewart had. And we've seen both of these riders come out in this motocross championship and really up their game. They find out that really what they love to do is go race motorcycles, not sit on the couch injured. I tell you, that's uh, some increased motivation when you're watching all the riders that you that you race against. Burn looks there. like he's got a real nice flow to him. His rhythm seems really good. He doesn't seem to be working extra hard right now. Well, the burner, as everyone calls him, he's one of those riders that rides with a lot of natural talent, very smooth. Oh, look at that. Bustles Cooper out of the way. Well, that's how Short got by him, so time to repay a favor. Australian making the move on the New Zealander. But both these riders, you know they've been putting in the hard work during the week. All the training, practicing, testing with the teams, having a tremendous amount of success this summer. And Cody Cooper, as you mentioned, from New Zealand, living down in Tallahassee, Florida now. Some good training going on down there. 
Yeah, he's got some guidance. Some, uh, I'm sure that all the time that he spends with Ben Townley, Ricky Carmichael, Ivan Tedesco, it's not an easy group to be around. And when I say that, <laughs> there's a lot of sarcasm and a lot of challenges. You know? Fun group. Oh, extremely fun, but I'm telling you, they don't get anybody any slack down there. And Carmichael has uh, set the bar for every other racer in motocross. We take a look at Jimmy Albertson having a fantastic ride here in fifth. And like I was saying, they'll, uh, there's a lot of lift going on down there on the practice and testing training days. Well, and Carmichael can easily hand it out because all he's got to do, if you look at him sideways, he's going to see my record book lately. Yeah. Josh Hill in sixth. Yeah, that record book of Carmichael's, that's like, it's like reading Moby Dick, you know? Yeah, it's like, <laughs> and it's literally his record book. <laughs> he owns just about all of them now. Albertson just really have a solid run here on the 702. Well, and Aaron, Aaron Bates spoke earlier about how Team Honda has really taken an interest in their top, uh, you know, privateer riders that are out there right now. Plenty of parts and, uh, and uh, you know, mechanics available with Townley out, Millsaps out. Yeah, I mean, they, they really have a lot of walking wounded. And it's, it's been a really tough year for Big Red. I mean, they really struggled last year with the same problem, then came back this year in the Supercross season. It looked like they had things Turn back around, team manager Eric Keo was finally smiling a little bit. And then, and then now they get to the motocross season and they're right back where they were a year ago. Yeah, yeah, very lucky though that Andrew Short has, has, has been healthy. He's putting in some great rides. Here's Josh Hill making his way around Albertson. Boy, you saw that roost just can kick right back into his face too. And look at the different line choice here. That inside is so rough and rutted. You can ride the inside, the outside. You can ride the walls in some of these positions here. They do a great job here at Washougal of always setting this track up to where that it has, you know, a really tough flow to it. It's, riders have a hard time getting comfortable here. No problems for James Stewart. He's leading quite comfortably right now. Thank you. Here in photo number one. On the Monster Energy Kawasaki out front, trying to accomplish something he's never been able to do, and that is win the motocross championship. Out front looking good too. Actually has uh, the 2009 Fox Racewear on. Sporting that for the first time. And I tell you, when a rider is so dominant, so powerful like Stewart, it's a great way to uh, display the new product. You know what I mean? You know, when you're riding as good as James Stewart is riding, you can make anything look good clothing wise. You know, really. I mean, I don't care if they wrapped him in a burlap bag and put him on top of that bike, he would look stellar. Well, and, and he is one of those individuals that is just uh, just the epitome of athletic performance, together with Eldon Baker, just a perfect specimen. He's, he's got the whole package going right now. But I'll tell you what. One guy who's on his way up to the ranks, and I think we're going to be talking a lot about in years to come, is this rider on the 902, Cody Cooper, has been very impressive this year. Definitely has this summer, and Josh Hill, Oregon native here, trying to use some uh, local knowledge to work his way past the New Zealander. I think the thing I like the most about Cooper, Jeff, is that he's, he's never been bothered by the number plate that he's battling with. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's unfazed. Yeah. But he's, he's just living a dream right now. I, I can only imagine what it's like for the riders from Australia, England, you know, uh, France to look at the magazine, see the videos of when they were little boys, dream of racing motocross here in the U.S. where the best motocross racers in the world are. And I mean, no disrespect to the world championship, but I'm telling you, James Stewart is on fire. He's the fastest guy in the world. Cody Cooper, Josh Hill, they are holding their own right now. It's gotta be just awesome for them to live that dream. Tim Ferry's been living a dream for quite a while in this sport. Uh, older veteran, Jason Palby here is on the 55. There's Ferry on the 15. Tim is second in the championship on his Monster Energy Kawasaki. Factory teammate, James Stewart. He's gotta score 20 points or more to mathematically keep the championship fight alive to the next round of competition. Well, it's gonna be tough here. 
the Mo the Moto Triple X Honda 55, Antonio Balbi putting on some great rides. And Barry having to nurse some injuries here this weekend. He's just not healthy, too. He's he, not feeling good. Yeah, he, he's not feeling good. Just, But as he's always done, as he goes out and gives him uh, you know, gives it 110% each time he gets on the bike. And look how dirty the front of his bike is right now. That just tells you that he's taking some serious roots this photo. Tim actually skipped Saturday practice. And you know, Jeff, we've talked about it all season long in Supercross and Motocross. It's very, the longer the race goes, the better he gets. His training, his endurance is incredibly high. So for him to have lost some of that physical strength as he gets around Baldy finally puts himself up to 13. That could be a real blow for him. Yeah, but it's 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 not the training that he did this week is what's paying off because it it's much like building a pyramid and and these riders they've been racing and training like Tim Ferry for so long that the foundation for that is there. And so that's what helps carry you through on a weekend where maybe you're not feeling good or you have an injury. It's it's that foundation and that base that you have that uh, helps propel you through the weekend. Michael Byrne getting his foundation back under his feet after coming off of all those injuries. Knee injury very similar to James Stewart. And you can see the, the speed really coming together now. The whole program coming together for Michael Byrne. It definitely is. And when we talked about the training and the foundation, one of the most important aspects of that is a rider's confidence. And Week after week, you keep building your confidence. You feel better, you feel better. Oh, right here, Josh oh. Summy off once again, off the track. Joe Gibbs Racing Team. You see Summy come off. Talked to the coach just recently, Joe Gibbs, and he said they're just, they're really trying to just get that right name to team up with Summy and grace it for next year. We'll be right back. To the end here at Moto Number One at Washougal Motocross Park, Ralph Shaheen, Jeff Emig, and Aaron Bates with you as we're working our way through round number nine of the 2008 Championship. Rider out of Haines City, Florida, just 22 years of age, James Stewart takes the white flag here in Moto Number One, and we talked about at the beginning of the show how James overcame a huge hurdle by winning in terrible conditions at Unadilla at the last round. And now, Jeff, this was the other race that was on his calendar with a big circle around it at Washougal because this is a place, and it was a left-hander just like that, where he put his foot down, found the rock, and blew out his knee. Right here. This is where he put his foot down in that moto last year and ended, ended the season point. We take a look at Andrew Short just having a phenomenal ride. Look at how that Red Bull Honda just bouncing around under him. This track gets really choppy here, and in the second moto, it's going to be even worse. Notice it's, it's, it's kind of a narrow track, or at least the, the, the racing line is fairly narrow here. It's not as wide as some of the others we've seen. Yeah, makes it tough. And I, I tell you, this, this section here, look at Stewart. just He's just punting once, around. Once again, a victory lap. Stewart just cruising here today. Moto number one, pretty much got it in the bag, barring any uh, unforeseen accident here. I mean, it's so amazing with James because the opening couple of laps for him, he is pushing that Kawasaki so hard in the early stages. Then he comes to the last couple of laps and he's usually so far out in front by then that he's just putting around like that Kawasaki's a scooter. Yeah, it really takes his lap time average and his uh, win margin average and lowers it. Yeah. So, you know, when, when, you, when you look at those uh, statistics we talked about it last week, it's, they're actually a little jaded. Yeah, it doesn't tell the whole story. This does, though, riding around here, the first moto just dialed in. I'm telling you, Stewart with his program, Eldon Baker has him on. The bike, the Team Kawasaki, and all the technicians have put under him. Mike Fisher and the gang over there have done a tremendous job. Mike Fisher, the team manager. And James never has a mechanical issue. Yeah, and, and, um, and that's really where, where the pressure lies. I think Stewart's pretty confident in his ability and his fitness and all of that. It's uh, the technicians and all the guys on the team, they want to make sure that everything's right because they sure would hate 
to lose an, you know, an undefeated season because of, because of a mechanical. So they dot the I's and cross the T's, you know? Oh yeah, and that's not just the Kawasaki guys, that goes to everybody. As the checkered flag falls for James Stewart, he's won moto number one here at Washougal. And that goes to the tire people too, Jeff, and, Everyone, all, and yeah. all those companies that support it with pieces and parts. Here comes Andrew Short, and behind him, Michael Byrne, who is closing that gap, and then Cody Cooper and Josh Hill. You see Hill come by in fourth. That was a really tight group there, second through fourth. Could have been anyone's race. So Cooper uh, will move on to moto number two with the rest and see if they can't get another solid finish there and maybe improve their overall. Here's the unofficial Toyota truck results for moto number one. Jimmy Albertson holds on for six. Alessi is right behind him in seventh. And let's go down to Aaron, who's with Michael Byrne. Michael, what is it about this track that's so difficult for a lot of riders, but you're really seeming to excel at? Uh, I mean, it's a track that you can't be too aggressive. Um, you know, you've got to be smooth and take your time. Uh, it's, it's pretty slick. It looks really awesome, but it's, uh, you know, it's kind of slick underneath because of all the, the shade from all the trees and stuff. So uh, you have to be smooth, and, uh, you know, that seems to work for me. Face it, you've got a passion for motorcycle racing. Fuel your passion on the go with news and results from Speed Green Alerts. Text KX to 773333 on your mobile phone to receive free motorcycle racing text alerts. Speed Green Alerts presented by Kawasaki. Here's Andrew Short. Andrew, is this where we're going to see your intensity level up a little bit? I hope so. We're having really good weather, and uh, the heat's not such a big factor today, so it allows us to sprint more, which is a lot more fun to race, and the track's pretty good, so I'm able to kind of break out a little more. What is it about this track that riders say are so deceiving? Uh, it's really slippery, and the shadows are really bad in and out of the trees. And it keeps you on your toes the whole time, so it's a lot of fun, but it is really tricky, too. Well, James Stewart had them all chase him to the line once again. He's with Aaron. James, it all depends on Tim Ferry and your ride, that next moto. What's going through your mind right now being this close? I don't even know. You know, I don't even know how he finished. And, uh, man, I'm having fun. You know, I overshot that first corner up there. I was trying to go for the whole shot again. But, uh, you know, I felt pretty good. You know, lap times are pretty consistent. And uh, it's a little cool today, so it makes it a little easier for everybody. So try to get another start like that in the next moto, and then we'll see what happens. When we... Coming into this round, last year this is where you blew out your knee. What was your frame and your state of mind coming into this race? Same state of mind I had towards Unadilla. Just respect the track and uh, try to get out of here safe. You know, I'm having a good time this season, so uh, I just want to thank everybody. So far, so good. James Stewart's got moto number one in the back. Now he'll go for moto number two. Tonight. Ready for moto number two. James Stewart wondering if he's going to be able to wrap up a championship here. Let's check in with Aaron Bates for progressive pre-race report. The opportunity of a lifetime was presented to the 105 of Sean Hamlin at the beginning of the season to race underneath the factory Yamaha tent. Well, that opportunity has just escalated to the most highest level. He is going to remain under the factory Yamaha tent for the remainder of the season. If you recall, he dislocated his shoulder not only once, but three times since Redbud National came through. And since then, he's been riding through pain taking acupuncture, Cairo, any kind of therapy he can to rehabilitate his shoulder. He said he's very excited to be under the factory tent for the remainder of the servant the season. He deserves to be at this spot, and he's going to give it his best shot. That's all you can do when you get a chance like that is, is try to make the best of it. Yeah, you give it 110%, do the best you can, try to be smart, try to work hard. What will be will be. And James Stewart wondering if he's going to be the motocross champion at the end of this moto. Moto number two, ready to go here on speed from Washougal, Washington. Stewart does not get the whole shot. Andrew Short does. Oh, and a big pileup back here. There's a 383, that's Robert Fitch. Cole Siebler's in there. And the other bike in there too, the 821 machine. Caught up in the middle, that's Bobby Bonds. The 74 of Blos. Not the way they wanted to start the day, that's for sure. Chris Blos, dead last in Moto2. 
off to a great start is the 29 of Andrew Short. And he's got James Stewart giving chase. Remember, Short was second in the first moto. If he can pull out a win here, that would give him the overall. It is very early, first lap here in the second moto, but Short had a fantastic ride. Stewart, though, trying to keep that win streak alive. He's won 17 straight motos every overall this year. Looking for win number 18. What an upset that would be. That would be like just incredible to see James Stewart get upset here this year. And that's no slack on, on Andrew Short. He's a tremendous rider, but I mean, Stewart has just been mind boggling fast like this. Look at that. Wow, look at that move. I, how did Stewart find a line there? Totally out of control there in those S turns, really riding on the edge and then just hugged the inside coming out of the tree section. But he makes something that looks totally out of control, totally planned. He is uh, an, a very explosive rider. There's no doubt about that. He is so, so determined to be out front on, the, on that first lap. So he officially led lap number one also. Again. Again. Let's see if Andrew Short can hang on the back here. This has got to be so deflating for a guy. You know, Andrew gets such a great start. Here's that progressive hole shot replay. And you know, at the stripe, that was Cody Cooper yeah. grabbing another hole shot. Yep. Tim Ferry with a little better start this time, running at ninth. He's up to ninth, and that's the kind of thing he's got to do, Jeff, just to mathematically force this championship to another round as he's in front of Josh Hill now. And he needs points to keep this thing, the championship going over his teammate, James Stewart, to push it to Millville. Fighting it out. Ferry just outside of the top 10, the first moto. He's battling with Ryan Abrigo on that 103. This is a tough place to be, buried in the pack here. I talk about it every week, but the roost at this track is so bad. And when you have to zigzag your way through the other riders. And not feeling well. Yeah, not, not feeling well. Josh Hill really applying the pressure to Tim Ferry now. Hill fourth in the first moto. Looking for that top five finish. Oh, and that doesn't help Tim Ferry at all, losing his spot to Hill. Whoa, look at Hill was off the track. They really have done some creative track design here. Coming into this tree section, multiple lines on this track. You notice that they add a lot of these. Uh, the inside will have a, like a hump or a bump or some sort of jump. The outside, you can rail around with tons of speed. So Tim Ferry hoping he can keep the championship alive while his teammate James Stewart leads in Moto2. To watch Hugo Washington, Ralph Shaheen, Jeff Emig, and Aaron Bates with you. This is round nine of the 2008 AMA Motocross Championship season, and Josh Hill is up to eighth here in Moto number two, just in front of Tim Ferry. They're chasing Jeff Alessi. Who would have thought at this point of the season that it would be Jeff Alessi that would be getting all of the TV time when his brother, older brother, Mike Alessi, had such a phenomenal start to this championship and really was the rider that was going to keep James Stewart honest. Mike, of course, out with that injury. Oh, just a horrendous crash earlier this year as Hill gets around his brother Jeff now for seven. But Jeff Alessi really putting on some strong rides. They are happy to report, though, that Mike is uh, recovering, recouping, and building strength back up. Take a look at the replay here. This is how Josh Hill makes his way around Jeff Alessi. Scrubs the first jump, drag race up here. There's so many rollers, and now you pre-jump this. Look how Hill just flows around the outside. He actually was about 30 feet from the top. He hits a little kicker, floated over the top, rather than taking off just from the top point and jumping all the way to the bottom. Nice move, Josh Hill. We talked about the good run that Albertson's having on the 702. Well, the 207 of Sean Collier is also having a pretty good run here today. He's about to deal with the 40 of Josh Hill. Hill gets around Collier. And he goes after Albertson. 
Sean Collier riding the privateer Kawasaki, but backed by one of my old teammates, Doug Dubach and Dr. D Racing. Been getting some great hole shots. You gotta think that all the testing that's going on with that machine and what they're doing down there is producing some serious horsepower, getting the getting all that power to the ground. And another rider who's really been on fire, Michael Byrne here, 26, on the rock star Makita Suzuki, looking for another podium finish. Well, those two Suzukis have spent a lot of time racing together here lately. Cody Cooper on the 902 and the 26 of Michael Byrne. See, Hill didn't quite make it over the top that time. He kind of touched right on there. You want to pre-jump and go all the way to the downside. Depending on how things shake out in the points here today, Kawasaki could actually lock up the Manufacturers Championship. Another incredible moto for James Stewart, just on rails. Absolute perfection. This would be the first time Kawasaki's won the Manufacturers Championship in motocross since Ricky Carmichael did it back in 2001 for the green team. It has been a while here. It's, Stewart was was their guy, and he's had a, a couple of really disappointing motocross championship seasons, but not this year. Firing on all cylinders, as they say. Yeah, and they really, you know, basically laid down the law a year ago in Supercross and said, James, we don't expect anything but the Supercross championship. And he delivered. And now I think it's James who's really put the pressure on himself to get this motocross championship put to bed. Well, he's trying to match Ricky Carmichael having the perfect season. Of course, Carmichael did that in 2002 and 2004. But he also won every overall in 2005. So there were three seasons where Carmichael won every overall. James Stewart trying to match that. We'll be right back to watch Google for more of Moto2. That's the 702, Jimmy Albertson running in sixth position here at Washougal. Tim Ferry trying to reel him in. Tim Ferry has got to score 20 points or more here this weekend to have a shot at keeping this championship mathematically alive. Now in moto number one, he was 11th. So he, he's got to do He's got to get pretty deep into the top 10 here, Jeff, to get enough points to keep this thing going. He's there, and he's right around it now. Yeah, he's, he's, he's close, but very, really struggling this weekend, but giving it a 110% as always. Another rider sporting some new riding gear. Seems to be that time of the year. Huh? Let everybody see what you got just before it's time to sell it all around Christmas. That's right. Make sure all the photos are in the magazine. Nobody's sporting the pink like you used to. That was a tough era. Albertson putting on a great ride here. Starting to get to the latter stages of the second moto and Ferry making a move on the inside. This is where veteran skill really starts to pay off for a guy like Ferry too, isn't it? Well, back to that pyramid, the foundation of your training and confidence really paying off. Ferry believes that he belongs in, 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 in front of Albertson. Makes the move on. He's 11 years older than his teammate. Stewart's 22, Ferry's 33, and they're one and two in the championship. 32, I thought this was Ferry's 30th year. You know? <laughs> it seems like it, I'm sure we, too. We joke with, with Timmy so much about that, but you can see these aggressive moves here that Ferry's put on Albertson. 24-year-old Cody Cooper on the 902. Battling still with Byrne, who's four years older than him. This is for the overall. This is for the final spot on the podium. Yeah, Cooper had a fourth and Byrne a third in the first moto. Yeah, so really the battle for the seniority on the, on the yellow bikes here. This is what it all comes down to. There's a serious difference in the bonus check between fourth and third also. Well, and there's a difference between privateer <laughs> and factory guy, too. Yeah. And Michael Byrne on the Rockstar Makita Suzuki. That's a factory Suzuki, number 26, the rider all in yellow. And Cody Cooper, sponsored by Suzuki City out of Biloxi, Mississippi. So you know, it's a much different deal. Well, there's no secret, though, that 
Roger DeCosta really has taken a liking to both of these riders. Even though Cody Cooper's on a, on a privateer back bike here, he's been getting a little extra help there from the man. DeCosta, Suzuki man for a number, number of years now. Of course, all those world championships back in the day, back in the 70s. Well, I'll tell you what, if Cody Cooper keeps riding like this, he might be getting a lot of support from the factory team. Well, that, that's a team that's going through a bit of transition. They're trying to get Michael Burns signed up again for another year and add maybe another rider or two to the factory team. Rumor is that Supercross champ Chad Reed will be riding yellow next year, so maybe Australian, New Zealand, Across the board. Yeah, and you got to see what happens with Michael Lessie too, and how his uh, recovery comes from that horrendous crash earlier this year, because he was a part of the factory Suzuki squad. Look at Burn inside, really pushing now on Cooper. Burner to the inside. Cooper goes high. That opens the door for him. Oh, and pulls the tear off too. That's a lot of. Well, that's multitasking, isn't it? He pulls <laughs> that all off. Sure comes through there and takes the position away. Uh, you can see how the shadows, these huge pine trees up here started to cast across the finish line, whoop section area. This is where the track, this time of day, very difficult. Hasn't been tough at all for James Stewart here at Washougal. He leads Moto2. Stewart, and to be honest with you, Jeff, I'm getting to a point this season where I'm running out of things to say about this guy. He's been putting on such a great performance all year long. I, I think we've used just about every adjective to describe this, this man's riding building. Well, and James Stewart really has been quiet as we see him take the white flag. One lap to go. Hasn't really said a lot other than that he's having a good time, but it hasn't been very, very, very boisterous. He has let his riding do the talking. Once again, on that final lap, on the parade lap, and barring any uh, any stroke of bad luck, he's going to win again, and that means that Andrew Short, in his bid to be a first-time winner here at Washougal, to join Jimmy Button, who did it back in 1999 on a Yamaha, is going to have to wait one more race. Well, Stewart has never been a big fan of the racetrack layout here at Washougal. The one thing he has always said is that he really likes fans up here. They are a dedicated bunch of real moto enthusiasts here at Washington. A very energetic crowd and he's given them quite a show here today and shown them the true James Stewart style of riding. Yeah, they absolutely pack this place. They love motocross racing here in the great Northwest. Stewart rolling around going for his 66th AMA win. 41 of those in motocross and motocross lights. 18 straight motos and the first champ manufacturer's championship in motocross for Kawasaki since 2001 when Ricky Carmichael last won, won four of them. So a good day for Kawasaki, although James looks like if uh, Tim Ferry can keep moving up a little bit, he's going to have to go on to another round before he can wrap up the Reiner's championship as well. Here it is, the payoff. Down the hill. Beautiful scenery, valley in the background. Like I said, the contrast of all the sponsorship banners, the fans here, just an incredible place to race motocross. What a great feeling it must be for James Stewart once again to all the hard work is paying off. Lady Luck is on his side. Well, and he, and he finally beat Unadilla last round, and now he's finally going to get to cross Washougal off the list, too. Two tracks that have really been uh, tough for him to get over and around and a clean, and he's done both of those. What a great day for James Stewart. Into the tree section one last time, and then he's going to pop out and see the fans through the whoops and over the finish line. The fans are just absolutely ecstatic right now. And I think with those two races gone now, Jeff, the only thing left for James this year, I mean, it looks like the championship's a foregone conclusion. It's just a matter of when. Now is can he win all of the moments? Can he clean sweep the season? And he still won't talk about that, doesn't really want to focus on that. Pretty soon, he's going to have to, because guess what? He just won another one. James Stewart wins motos one and two here at Washougal and claims the overall. Andrew Short, just an incredible ride here today. 2-2, two -two, just solid. No mistakes. 
great start here in the second moto, but could not match the pace of James Stewart. And with all the injuries that have fallen on the Red Bull Honda team, team manager Eric Kehoe has got to be very happy with the performance of Andrew Short. No doubt about that. It's a nice feeling. Oh, and look at Michael Byrne once again closed up on the back of Short. Yep, and Michael Byrne's going to get a pair of third place finishes, and he will be on the podium here today for Roger DeCoster and the Suzuki Squad. We'll be right back. Get all the AMA Outdoor Championship action on motocross.com. On motocross.com. And now, the action is closer than you think. So close you can taste the dirt. These are the true superstars of the sport. Log on to motocross.com. Then click on AMA Toyota Motocross Championship Racing Action. Motocross.com. Speed's coverage of the AMA Toyota Motocross Championship from Washuga, Washington is brought to you by Suzuki, maker of performance-driven motorcycles, scooters, and all-terrain vehicles. And by the full-size Toyota Tundra, the truck that's changing it all. Pink's All Out takes and Pink's All Out Wednesday at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 10.30 p.m. Pacific. Don't miss big nights of hard charging, heart pounding, grassroots drag racing on speed. Catch the party with Pink's All Out takes Wednesday night at 9.30 Eastern. Then join the race with Pink's All Out Thursday night at 9 Eastern. Two nights and only one place on speed. And only one place for James Stewart. That's Victory Lane. He's going to the top step of the podium. Here's a look at our Toyota Trucks unofficial results from moto number two. Josh Hill ends up fifth, Tim Ferry is sixth. He scores enough points, championship moves on to another round. Now let's go see Michael Byrne who finished third today. With two laps left to go, Michael Byrne made the pass past Cody Cooper. Michael, you made a tire selection change in between motos. How much of a difference did that make for you? <laughs> uh, it was better, you know, we went to more of a harder terrain tire and you know, Doug from Bridgestone does a great job and you know, he always takes care of us with the best tires. So. Uh, I was confident in, in, in his decision to uh, to go that way, and you know I think it started coming to me at the end. Andrew Short with his 2-2 comes up second in our Toyota Trucks overall results. Jeff Alessi and Timmy Alberson sixth and seventh. And let's go meet Andrew Short, who's with Aaron now. You can only imagine how difficult it is to keep it together when you have nobody to challenge you in front of you and nobody for a long distance behind you. Andrew, what did you do in order to just keep your own pace going out there? I've been working on a lot of things during the middle of the week, um, especially with Barry. It seems like he's been cracking me, and uh, mentally I've been trying to get stronger. And uh, When you're by yourself like that, that's what it took. It felt like I was in time trial mode. And uh, those guys behind me are going really fast to keep me honest as well, so it was pretty hard. you got a two-week break coming up. What are you planning to do to come back for those final three races and give it your all? Uh, one week, I'm going to take some time off and play around on the farm. And uh, other than that, just get back to work, uh, start preparing for Supercross next year, doing some testing. But for the most part, just uh, getting back to the schedule for racing and outdoors. Thanks. That's the thing about these motocross guys, it never really stops. Right back into Supercross. And here's a look at the points. As we said, it's going to go on to at least round number 10, where James Stewart will hopefully wrap up the championship. Here's James. James Stewart so close to sealing the deal here at Washougal. James, you got two-week break coming up. Is this going to be agonizing for you to sit there and wait in order to come back and finish this off at Millville? No, I'm going to go hang out with my brothers at Loretta's and watch the young upcoming talent coming up. And uh, no, I'm excited about it. You know, I never expected to wrap it up this early. And, uh, you know, I'm just happy going race by race and uh, see what happens. You know, hopefully we get it at Millville, but you never know. We just got to have fun. And he's going to start clearing off some space in that mantle. <laughs> Got a lot of trophies from this year. It's yeah. been an incredible season so far. Well, maybe he'll do it in Millville. That's the next one coming up. You'll see that right here on Speed in August, 10 p.m. Eastern time. James Stewart, he's going to be there for sure. And hopefully wrapping up the championship. There's Big James congratulating his son on one more victory. For Aaron Bates and Jeff Emig, I'm Ralph Shaheen. So long from Washington. Congratulations to our overall winner, James Stewart.